Ancient Egypt, 4000 to 1800 BC. Ancient Egypt was surrounded by deserts, but it was green and fertile because of the Nile River. It flooded every year, depositing rich, silty soil along its banks. The Egyptians used the Nile for transportation and cultivated the land alongside it. They grew wheat and barley for bread and beer, and flax for linen. They raised cattle as beasts of burden. Egyptians had a highly developed religion and advanced medical, astronomical, and engineering knowledge. The Egyptians loved to wear lucky charms. Their favorite charms were carved stone scarabs. The scarab beetle was sacred to their sun god Ra. The Pharaohs For most of their history, Egyptians were unified in one kingdom. Administrators and priests ran everyday affairs, but the head of society was the Pharaoh, a living god. People believed that ceremonies he performed kept the goodwill of the people and the gods and kept the Nile flowing and kept society in order. When the pharaoh died, his body was mummified and placed his body in stone sarcophagi in an imposing tomb, along with jewelry, clothing, furniture, and food, everything he would need for eternity. Sacred writings on the tomb walls were meant to protect him in the afterlife. Pyramids From around 2630 BC, Egyptians built many pyramids, the most famous being the Great Pyramid at Giza. No one knows exactly why the shape was chosen, but the scale and dimensions suggest astronomical, mathematical, and spiritual purposes. By building such green monuments, the pharaohs sought to please the gods and give a significant permanent mark on history. Some of the stone blocks above the king's chamber weighed 60 tons, and about 2.3 million of them were used. Pyramid building involved immense skill. The largest, the Great Pyramid of Giza, may have taken over 30 years to build. The three, the Great Pyramid, the first of the three pyramids at Giza, and the tomb of the Pharaoh Khufu had many passageways and chambers. Egyptian civilization hugged the Nile River. The floodplains of the delta were rich and highly populated. Though cities stretched a long way up the Nile, riverboat transportation was important to traders. Egyptian society. Most people in Egypt were farmers. They gave part of their produce to the local temple as taxes. Very few people could read and write, and schooling was only for boys. Those who could read and write were called scribes. It was they who went on to become priests and administrators who ran the country for the pharaoh. But at the heart of Egyptian life was communication with the gods. The funeral rites of Egyptian pharaohs were elaborate. A pharaoh's procession could reach the Absur at the Nile River in 2450 BC. The procession would enter the valley temple and the embalmed body would be carried up a causeway to the pyramid. Towards the end, the Egyptians created remarkable works of stone carving. They built enormous pyramids and temples. Tall obelisks were cut from block of stone. No effort or expense was spared to honor the gods or the pharaoh, who was their living link with humanity. The Egyptians developed a way to preserve the body of their god king, and many building projects were undertaken to provide him with a tomb for his eternal protection. In time, everyone who could afford it would have their preserved bodies placed in tombs, with treasures for the afterlife and sacred skulls to guide them on it. Return to Greatness After the time of the first pharaohs and the pyramid builders, there was a decline that lasted for over a hundred years. With no strong ruler, the people felt the gods had abandoned them. Then, around 2040, Mentuhotep became pharaoh, brought order, and restored Egypt's greatness. This period is called the Middle Kingdom. The pharaohs reorganized the country and again built pyramids, though not as large as those at Giza. Some of Egypt's finest art and literature was produced during the Middle Kingdom. Egypt had been isolated from the rest of the world at the time. Ancient Egyptians were not great travelers, sailors, or conquerors, but great Middle Kingdom rulers as of Amenemat I and Senwurset III expanded Egypt's boundaries. They built forts to protect the country and created a strong army. They invaded countries such as Nubia to gain control of gold reserves. So, a couple other interesting objects. Um, some key dates about the Egyptians in 3300 BC. 
growth of towns and rivers in the Nile Valley and development of hieroglyphics. Uh, 3000 BC, Upper and Lower Egypt are united under a single pharaoh. 2920 is the first pharaohs. 2575, you have the Old Kingdom. The capital is Memphis, the high point of Egyptian civilization. 2550, you have the Great Pyramid completed. 2040, the Middle Kingdom expansion and development. And 1550, the New Kingdom, Egypt at its largest and wealthiest. Some of the Egyptian gods include Horus, the sky god, and his spirit entered the living pharaoh. His eyes were the sun and the moon. Ptah, the creator god, invented arts and was the local god of the capital Memphis. Hathor, the goddess of love and beauty, once raised the sun up to heaven on her horns. Isis, the sister and wife of Osiris, was the mother of Horus. She had great magical powers. Re Horakti, the sun god, and Horus joined together, is known the sun on the hawk's head. Osiris was the god of the dead. In his realm, souls were judged for their worthiness.